Mesa hibernation. This site in Chicopee, Massachusetts is hopefully getting a bit of a rebirth. The first Electrify America site that went into the ground way back in May of 2018. Seems like a long time in EV years, certainly, but it does not have its original equipment. It looks quite a lot different as it happens. We have uh, brand new painting on the parking spaces, which say, they actually all say up to 350 kilowatt charging, where these were two 150s and two 350s. So maybe now these are all gonna be 350 kilowatts. Which is different to some of the other sites that we've seen retrofitted where they left in the old equipment. So we're gonna see some uh, different type of sites here, I think. So we'll get out, we'll go over and take a look and see how. First site for Electrify America of all of them, Central Mass. But we've been here a few times. It's where we did our first video actually getting 55 kilowatts on a Bolt EV, can you imagine? The time the best we had otherwise was 50 kilowatt EV Go chargers. So that was a big deal back then. Fast forward four years. These are all Signet units. High power 350 kilowatts, 920 volts, 500 amps. So all future proof, these were manufactured here in 2022, May. So we're only talking a few months old for these pieces. These are different to the BTC power stations that we saw down in Valley Stream on Long Island. Really clearly marked spaces here. Got restricted vehicles only, electric vehicles, all embossed serial numbers, power input output, manufacturing date again, 2022. Not all of these are the same. You got, uh, they're all Signet, but you got three of the fourth gen chargers. I did think they were the same one I was in the car because they have the black sidings, but this one is actually one of the previous generation, which is still good because these are very reliable as well. We always like when we see these, but this is a 2021 manufacture last year. So still new. The reason for this one would be this having the Chatamo plug as well as the CCS. All the others are a single CCS. This is a dual unit, so you do still get the CCS plug, but it's in conjunction with still allowing Chatamo. So even though they have stopped installing Chatamos at uh, the newer sites, the ones that are being upgraded, retrofitted, do have the Chatamo connector still, which is nice to see for leaf owners. And Mitsubishi Outlander EVs and a handful of others. You can see clearly marked they don't have the new labeling yet which is uh, presumably going on soon maybe why they're not activated yet everything's in the ground they're all still protected screen protected but it's a good looking site the station that was on the end there the first one had a screen out the last time we came through it still started up a session so that's on the positive side but it was definitely showing its age with screens out and uh, broken connectors on some of these so you'll see now there's no redundancy on all except the uh, dual combo plug you've got just the one and this will come down that's probably not unlocked yet for the retractable but we've seen on the valley stream thing that came down a good four or five feet at least so you're going to be able to access we pulled the ionic in where the charging's on that side pretty much everything here like if you pull in on this one for example because uh, you won't always have your pick of stations if we pulled in those first on the other stations we wouldn't be able to get it around the back of the car but we would be able to do so in uh, these because they will retract and snake around the back of the car so it's looking good it's a waiting activation let's jump back in the car to get some quiet and okay so originally we had looked at the valley stream site as kind of an anomaly just uh, a place that they had uh, taken the opportunity to throw in some new hardware and uh, get the old malfunctioning ones uh, retrofitted which been fine it worked very well a um, bunch of stations down there and they left the old btc power equipment in for the Chatamo uh, connector. Subsequently, um, people moaning more and more about uh, stations being offline or 
congested and offline and all the things that come with uh, not being able to get a charge as quickly as you want and electrify america having a bit of a torrid time towards the end of august and uh, into september as more and more people jump on that kind of complaint train overblown claims of the system being in meltdown we've just done you know four thousand miles this summer probably five thousand in the end once you do all the short trips and uh mostly on electrify america really no problems other than the occasional charger being out adding to the extra congestion of more and more people using the network. But clearly it's a problem, whether it's out west, where a lot of people had problems around fully charged live. Um, so now you have these. And it's certainly, you know, it always looks good when we get into these new sites and they're painted up nicely and everything is uh, looking shiny and new. Um, you know, the proof is really in the pudding and the eating, how it uh, holds up after repeated use, what kind of performance the equipment delivers. Will it really up reliably deliver up to 350 kilowatts all the time? Um, all the stations are marked as 350 kilowatts, so this is an upgrade for this site, not just in terms of the hardware, but also the power on every station is now going to be 350 kilowatts. So it's interesting to see that, um, whether that will change, you know, whether we'll start to get these retrofits and uh, Electrify America just trying to say, well, 350 kilowatts is the most suitable for a travel site, this is the hardware we've got, and uh, deliver that for all the equipment, at least the ones that are on these interstate routes, maybe not the ones around the cities as we see in Boston, which are usually capped at 150 kilowatts. And beyond that, you know, what happens to those old uh, pieces of kit? Are they um, refurbished and used in other scenarios? So you could say certainly commercial charging, fleet charging, where a bunch of them could be installed more cheaply with maintenance uh, techs on site and able to fix them because their, you know, equipment is needing to be running and they need it on a daily basis. Um, hopefully that's the case. It'll be interesting to find out, you know, from Electrify America with a focus on sustainability, uh, what's happening to those things. So if anyone can answer that or if anyone from Electrify America uh, watches this, please let us know down in the comments. It would be great to know that the stations that have been pulled out are being shipped off and reused somewhere where uh, they'll go to good life. We're not the only ones with an interest in checking it out. Swanky looking maki taking some photos too, so we'll see if those end up on Plugshare.